G'day fellas. Welcome to a recorded game cast where we're going to be looking at Orders, who's playing on the Chinese. Now, Orders is also known, known by the name Breeze Brothers. You would know him as, or Age of Killer. His opponent spawning in the north of the map, playing on the Japanese, is Painted Egg, also known as Sir Callan. So obviously in the definitive edition, you can change your name around as much as you like. And that's why we get all of these random names. So both of these players are quite talented players. Uh, both of them are top 20 at the moment. So these accounts, I think, are also in the top 20. Now, on this map, we're playing we're playing on P uh, Pampas Sierra. And on the left-hand side of the map, on the west side of the map, you've got the llamas that are spawning. And so what, you, what you want to do is make sure that all of your units are over here scouting this out. We see all three units from Painted Egg are scouting out the llamas as well as orders. Now, he's got his explorer over here as well as his disciple. But one of the things he's not doing is he's not keeping his disciple as a shepherd. He's lost the first llama. It's probably going to be losing the second Llama as well. This is undoubtedly going to get picked up. It looks like it's being followed by the Cherry Orchard just sitting in, in wait as it comes through. We've got Costa that's going to be picking that one up. Three, two, one. There it goes now. So doing a little bit of a mistake there from Painted Egg. Oh, sorry, uh, from Orders, rather. Painted Egg picking it up. Uh, the Chinese player now going to be dropping down that village, looking like they're going to be macroing towards a second village. They're overgathering if they're, if they're seeking to be placing down the second one. Uh, there's the second one getting placed down now. Wait, I take that back. Hold on a minute. Oh, there are 180 wood. I, I, for, for whatever reason, I thought there were 160 wood. I take that back completely. Uh, not overgathering at all. Actually, immaculate macro. Uh, not even overgathering by one wood. We're going to see another villager in queue. And we'll take a look and see what orders is up to. Nothing too much going on. We've uh, picked up a couple more llamas on the north side of the map. We'll have a look and see if there's any llamas that remain. There's no more llamas that remain. Every single one has been picked up. And now the explorer is beginning to get to work on the cherry orchid rich rickshaw. First shipment is coming in for orders. We'll take a look and see what he's got on the way. It is the northern refugee. So he's going to be getting one, two, three villages. Now, some players like Maito prefer when they start off, if they can get a nice big wood treasure, they put down a third village before this arrives and they actually get a four villager shipment, which is on par with some of the most powerful shipments in the game, including from the Lakota. We'll take a look at what other cards he's got in his deck. I see the Mandarin Duck Squad, one of the best cards in the game. 500 food, getting the Flamethrower as well as the, the CKN. We've also got a couple of Mercenary cards, both the Iron Troops as well as the Manchu. And a couple of cards in the Industrial Age, very standard Chinese deck. With the exception of, say, there's no seven Hand Mortars. But I think in this matchup, you probably want to avoid uh, the Hand Mortar card. Because realistically, your opponent is, isn't like to, likely to send the uh, the two flaming arrows. So we'll now take a look. So we've got those three villagers all coming in. Now, those villagers haven't been microed. We see that they're all standing idle right now. So no waypoint set for them. And the llamas are beginning to fatten. We'll tune back in with Painted Egg. We'll see what Painted Egg is up to. He's got down his consulate opening up with a, uh, a Portuguese consulate. It's going to be reducing the cost of his shrines as well as all of his other buildings. And a couple of llamas just sitting down here idle by this uh by this shrine just saying you know what we're just going to chill out down here probably add a second shrine down here eventually and this is exactly what he wants to be doing if you're ever playing the japanese you want to be shrining your opponent's hunt first so when you are uh shrining what you want to be doing is is putting shrines instead of it being putting them on your uh your own side you want to start by shrining up your opponent's side first so you shrine down here to the south and then work your way backwards up the north and going up the sides of the map. You can do the interior of the map as well, but you, typically you want to avoid it because it's this, the fastest way to your opponent's base is through the middle of the map. And so if they're going to be walking through the middle of the map, they're going to be finding your shrines. It's very easy to kill them. You're just donating over some XP. And so now we see the Toshogu Shrine being placed for Painted Egg, dropping it down with a single villager. We have a look at his opponent. We don't see any, any uh, wonder that's been dropped down just yet. Probably going to have something in the front, a, uh, a nice big, uh, what is it called? The Summer Palace. But no, we actually see down at the back, we've got four villagers building up the Porcelain Tower. So Porcelain Tower, each age that you build this, the resources change depending on the age that you build it. So we can actually see the production value uh, for it. So it will remain at a set amount for the remainder of the game, depending on which age you build it. So if you build it as an Imperial Age Porcelain Tower, you're going to be getting more resources from it than, say, a, a Commerce Age Porcelain Tower. So we'll take a look back from the line of sight. We'll see where each player is up to. We've got Bei Yu Feng in the middle. Second shipment now coming in. Probably going to be saving up that shipment for the 700 coin. We'll have a look at our opponent, Painted Egg, now dropping down the shrine. So these shrines are, instead of being down here towards the south, the shrines are up here to the north. We've got shrines over on the east of the map as well going to be going up. So not opting to take out this hunt. So taking out these hunts from your opponent actually does a couple of things. And we'll talk about that. So... 
your opponent, your your so let's say from the perspective of the Chinese player, okay? He he needs food. Now, once these hunts run out, he's gonna start looking for more hunts. He's going to be looking for this hunt and he will find it. And then he needs to go to his next hunt. And he's gonna look around and look around and then he's gonna say, okay, this is my next hunt. This is my next hunt. But when you've got shrines on there, you isolate your hunt or your opponent's hunt. And you say, you can't have this until you have killed these shrines. And that's why it's so important to be shrining your opponent's hunts because it forces them to react and it forces them to come and siege them down. And at that same time, your opponent uh, is, is wasting time with his military doing that and it's buying you time. And that's exactly what you need as Japan to get ahead. So now we've got the age up finally coming in for orders a little bit earlier. So uh, just before the five minute mark, keep in mind, he did have seven villagers on here. Now changing it over to coin and sending in seven step riders. Okay, so this isn't something that we see a lot, seven step riders. Uh, so instead of going for say 700 coin, which would be quite typical with a build order with the, um, at the front, you often have the uh, the summer palace, which provides you that 400 coin, uh, 400 uh, food rather. We've got the seven step riders. So the seven step riders are going to be putting out a lot of pressure onto the map. Now, what what does he know about when it comes to shrines? He knows about one shrine. I don't think he knows, he, he would be able to recognize that that's a shrine or that kind of looks like a shrine right there. It's not actually a shrine. Um, and uh, he doesn't know anything about the right hand side of the map. So going to be sending these out, going to be getting them into siege mode. That's for sure. We'll take a look at Painted Egg, see what he's up to. Painted Egg now sending in 600 wood, followed by 600 wood. So going back to back 600 wood, shrining the entire map, doing the right thing. We talked about this a little bit earlier. So avoiding shrining down here, probably knows that his opponent is going to be putting out a little bit of pressure and just wants to avoid it. Now keep in mind, these Step Riders, okay? Step Riders are one population units, okay? But they've got a huge amount of siege. 25 siege attack. Now that is a lot, okay? When you've got seven of these bad guys getting shipped in, this is like a, an eight pike shipment basically. But these guys run really fast. They run at 7.25 movement speed. So they are very effective in this matchup. Really good against Sweden, really good against Japan. Absolutely great at burning down shrines just because they do it so quickly. So very, very nice shipment there from Orders. We'll take a look at Orders. We'll see what he's up to uh, after we check out the base. We actually see that in the base of Painted Egg, he's got, how many llamas is that? That is like, that's five llamas on that to Shogu Shrine. So 1.38 wood a second, a huge amount of wood. That's equivalent to almost three villages. That is absolutely awesome. We'll take a look back at Orders. Orders now sending in 700 wood. So not even going for 700 coin, doing a, this is this is very, very nice. I like this build order a lot. And the reason why I like this a lot is because it's, a, it's almost a max greed build order, but it still opens with aggression. So you can be doing a lot of things with that first shipment, whether you want to be going 300 uh, export and then getting potential trickles, or you can just put out some pressure on the map and don't let your or, and not let your opponent s expand freely, and that's exactly what orders has done. So he's going to be able to get this look. Look at this beautiful macro here, overgathering by about 50 food, but that's not too bad, not at all. Now going to be going up, dropping down the Confucian Academy. So the Confucian Academy is going to be give, giving you that one free flying crow that's going to trickle in, as well as once you've aged up, it's going to be giving you those eight arc boosters. I think it's eight. It could be 10. I'm not too sure exactly what the numbers are. It's been a while since I played China, and that is one of those dials that do get changed quite a bit. Now transitioning over, he's got that 700 wood that has arrived, picking it up with a couple villages. We're probably going to be seeing a consulate go down, probably going to see a war academy go down, and probably going to see another village go down. It's very nice macroing off that 700 wood for the Chinese player. And he continues to siege down these shrines. We see some Ashigaru moving in. Now, the problem is these units aren't going to be able to react to the Ashigaru in the sense that they're going to be able to be aggressive. He's just going to have to pull them back treat them quite defensively. Let's see if he can pick off that one. He, he tries to pick off that one step rider, but it doesn't look like he gets the shot off. So still going to be able to burn it down. Now the Ashigaru are going to be able to chase him around. We have a look. He's still allied with the Portuguese consulate. Going to be grabbing the one Portuguese expeditionary company, which is the seven Bastilroys. I think they're pronounced Bastilroys. Uh, they are the crossbows. So they're consulates. or oh, they're actually ordnance Bastilroys. Uh, so I'd love to see these step riders moving towards the south or the southeast of the map start sieging down these shrines because it's a little bit more dangerous when you're uh, pushing up towards your opponent's base like this. Even though you've got very fast step riders, you know, you, we can see that the explorer has gone down for the Chinese player. So he is aware that there's units up here as well. He knows that there could potentially be units down here, but he's managed to juke out his opponent's units. So managing to keep these units alive. So a very nice job from him. Almost with the age up now. So we don't have that at War Academy drop down. No, we, I take that back. We have the War Academy being dropped down in the middle of the map. Two villages being dropped down as well. So this is, was the fourth village that's been dropped down. A huge amount of population space ready to go. Allying with the British allies. And sieging down this shrine coming back for it again. But the Ashigaru following the 
couple of explorers here as well. So now the arc boost is moving out. We've got eight arc boosters. We'll check back in with Painted Egg. We'll see what he's up to. He is almost up to the third age himself. Going to be macroing. A very effective macro. Shrines on food at this point. 170 shrine pops, so not too bad. Poofing a couple of his explorers away now, so keeping them back safe in his base. Just a massive eight Ashigaru at this point. And now the Chinese Death Ball begins to build. So orders going with the 10 arc boosters and training up some territorial army. So territorial army going to be those three Changdaos and the three arc boosters. And moving into the north of the map to begin sieging down the remaining shrines. We'll take a look at Painted Egg and see if he's going for a raid. He is going for a cheeky little raid on the bottom side. He's got eight Ashigaru, which is going to be more than enough to one shot a villager without their great coats. Now keep in mind the Asian civilizations don't have access to the great coats, but they do have the British consulate allied. Uh, so I think that they're still going to be able to, to shoot that out. Let me just uh, do some math. I think I've got 24 attack on each of these bad boys. Uh, so 24 attack times that. That's that's more than enough because there's eight of them. So they're going to be absolutely fine. We take a look and see that he's spotting out the forward base as well. He knows that uh, that Orders is going to be doing an aggro strategy. We've got the Explorer now building up some Disciples. Going to probably be getting them over. We see the Age up in queue as well. We've got the Golden Pavilion. So six Yumi is going to be coming from that. And some very toxic walls coming out. This almost looks like we're watching uh, the Japanese player like Kanisi or something like that. But the wall's not actually getting up over on the left-hand side. Now there's eight villagers back here building this wonder for the Japanese player. He wants to get this up as quickly as possible. Also training a whole bunch of Yumi archers in queue. Meanwhile, getting siege down on the back line over on the left-hand side by those uh, by those units. Ashigaru coming back now, finally. A villager going up just to do a, a little quick wall, but dying immediately. The arc boost is just taking her out uh, as, she, as she does it. We'll take a look. The uh, disciples are now getting in on the back line. Just a couple villagers, five villagers remaining on that wonder. It's about to pop. And when it does, we actually see that uh, Orders is moving back from this perspective, holding quite well. The Bastiroys, together with the Yumi Archers, are, are, are quite effective against the uh, the Explorer. This is a little bit of a misplay, I would say, from Orders. He wants to have this Explorer out, but he does scout the stable is up uh, for the uh, for the Japanese player, so knows that it could mean either Nagis or potentially Yabusami coming out. And now the Ashigaru are coming back in nice and safely. They managed to get out. And the units continue getting uh, DPS out onto the Disciples. A huge mass of Arc boosters at this point. It's continuing to siege down these Shrines over to the left-hand side. And look at the units that are flowing in. We've got five Meteor Hammers coming in now from the Chinese player. Moving towards the back of the base. We see the villagers are trying to do their best to escape as well. Ashigaru getting cornered along with their Yumi partners. The Dis Disciplined Yumi now getting upgraded. We're going to have nine Yumi coming in from the home city. Seven Yumi underneath the town center in com combined with the nine from the backside. Probably going to need to see Minutemen called here. And it's exactly what we do. The Minutemen now getting called out. Going to be able to deflect these Meteor Hammers. That's primarily the biggest target here. You need to be making sure these Meteor Hammers are dealt with. The Meteor Hammers are going to be able to take out all of your ranged infantry. So very carefully focusing down these units. We see that the, the arc boosters are going to be able to uh, to be putting out damage onto this backline, but it looks like that the mass is beginning to dwindle for the Chinese player. We've now got villagers that continue to be idled up to the top. They've finally worked themselves out onto a tree, and it looks like this push is going to be completely shut down by the Japanese player. The Chinese player looking like they're in quite a good spot. Uh, so, sorry, rather the uh, Japanese player looking like they're in quite a good spot. Uh, nine more Yumi archers being sent from the home city. One of the great things about the, the Japanese is that they can send in their shipments twice. Uh, now, despite this, okay, even though we might be thinking, okay, the Japanese player looks like they're in a good position. Keep in mind their economy has been damaged significantly. They're down to 130 population when it comes to their shrines. So still on the map, they've only got 10 shrines. Ideally, they should be at 20 shrines. So they're sitting at half what they should be. And despite that, we've still got more units that are burning out here, sieging down. Really needs to be focusing, making sure that his mass uh, survives at this point because he's getting ahead uh, when it comes to his economy. If we have a look at the perspective from Orders, Orders is on 33 villages compared to the 27 of his opponent. In addition to that, we've also got other things that aren't included in that, including the Porcelain Tower, which is gathering at around the rate of four villages, so really 37 villages. And then we've got the Confucian Academy on top of that, which is training Flying Crows. So that is another five villages on top of that. So we're looking at about 42 villages for the Chinese player versus roughly 28 villages over for the Japanese player, plus all of their shrines. And so if we call each shrine a villager, we see that there's eight shrines out right now. There's about to be seven. So that's seven. So 35 villages roughly, plus the big boy in the back, who's worth about three. So yeah, about, they're relatively even economies at this point in time. 
Uh, but one of the things that we do see is that the Japanese player has got to send Cherry Orchid Rich Draws to try and stay in the game, whereas his opponent is going to be sending in unit shipments. Unit shipment after unit shipment, so he's still got more unit shipments that can be sent. The 13 CKN going to be sent in from the home city, potentially. Villagers out on the map. We'll do a little bit of a speed up just while we have this brief lull in action. The Discipline Chang Dao. 14 Discipline Chang Dao, as well as 6 Arc Boosters, so not a huge mass. But we've got the terri more territorial armies coming out now. The Step Riders over on the left-hand side of the map getting chased away by the enemy units. And the main focus is going to be on this Flying Crow. Now, keep in mind, Painted Egg hasn't sent through any Flaming Arrows yet to deal with this, this Flying Crow. It's going to be very difficult for him to nullify. I say that, but you, you know what? There's 46 Yumis here. He's going to be able just to walk in and one-shot these bad boys. So the Yumis are just going to move in into, like, let's say the Flying Crow is right here. He just moves up, one-shots it. Dead. That's it. That's the, that's the end of the Flying Crow. So uh, it, they do look very fierce, but when you've got that many Yumi Archers, you really don't need to worry about it. So he, he's almost full Yumi Archer at this point. So we've got 46 Yumi Archers out, and that's it. How many Ashigarus have we got out on the field? We've got four Ashigaru out on the field. So Painted Egg doing a, a little bit of painting of the Yumi Archers, I'd say. Uh, going to be putting them all over the map. But still we see the Shrines getting burnt down. So more Shrines going down now. So one, two, three sharp Shrines going to be going out. He reveals the Flying Crow. Now his opponent would have known about that from the Arc Boosters that he saw out early. There was a, a decent mass. Um, and we see that the opponent is on 100 Shrine population at the moment. So slowly getting back up. He's got a build limit of 8 of these. or Sorry, a build limit of 20, but he's only got 8 of them. Taking out a couple of villages. We see two villages going down just here. And trying to rebuild up those shrines. So this is where it really gets important for orders to be walling off this side. He knows that his opponent is going to want to come back for these. Just, a, you know, cheeky little wall in here. Just 510 wall across here. 510 wood wall across here. Boom, you're done. Absolutely fine. You can prevent your opponent from expanding out there any further. Now we've got a bit of a push coming on. We see in the back we've got the, the Flying Crow. A couple of arc boosters firing off at the Discipline Yumi. Now keep in mind, Yumi plus walls is a very potent combo. And that's exactly what we've got here because you can never take out these Yumi behind the walls with any kind of cavalry because the cavalry are just going to get stuffed around by the walls. And you might be thinking, okay, but Drongo, you can just burn the wall down. Well, yeah, that's the case. But then you come over to this wall, you pop a gate in it, just like you're doing over here. Ashigaru now getting caught out by a lot of the Changdao. Still got Step Riders here that are getting in on the action as well. The Yumi's on the right-hand side, 34 Yumi's. Need to be careful of a potential Flying Crow coming in. We'll take a look and see where it is. The Flying Crow getting stuck a little bit behind. More Flying Crows are on the way at the moment, but uh, the Yumi now pushing forward and just saying, you know what, we're going to try and deal with you first-handed. Flying Crow going to get a shot off, coming into line of sight, unpacking, set, getting ready for the rocket. Rocket going to be going in onto the back line of the Yumi, taking out two Yumi, doing a fair bit of damage to two other Yumi standing next to it. Chinese player looking like they're in a quite a good position as well, chasing back those units. He's got a good batch of cavalry here. Then, as I mentioned earlier, the, the wall is what's going to be causing a lot of issues here because the wall can simply be used as like a reset point for the Yumi Archers. They had cavalry that were on top of them, and now the cavalry is completely nullified. So seeing we, we spot two cavalry units getting picked off here. We've got two more behind the wall, but these are going to get picked off as well because we've got the Yumi Archers that are just having no hesitation about it. That's three cav now getting picked off from that batch. We've got a new batch of cavalry that are coming in. So we've got three Meteor Hammers together with some Iron Flails. Going to be trying to push up, do their best to get through here. The, uh, Despite that, we've got the Yumi Archers that continue to sit on the back line. 110 population at the moment uh, for the Japanese player. So still losing quite a fair few Shrines. And now the Yumi Archers are managing to hold 26 Yumi. So still retaining a fair bit of the mass. Iron Flail is the last remaining cavalry unit with the exception of the Step Rider, which hasn't been upgraded, only 160 HP. Going to be one shot almost completely by the Ashigaru on the front line. Yumi now getting a volley onto it. And the Flying Crow is moving in. We see the Yamabushi coming out. The Yamabushi going to be dealing with the Flying Crow. Five Yamabushi on top of that Flying Crow. They're going to be able to take it out in time. It doesn't look like it. And they're slowly getting whittled down. We've got three Yamabushi, two Yamabushi remaining now. And the rocket going off, taking out two of them. And the one Yamabushi goes down with 15 HP. But it means that they're going to be able to deal with the... Uh, the Flying Crow very easily with that barracks. And despite that, on the back line, now we've got some more units coming in on top of that. We've got four cavalry units on top. And five Nagis now coming out from the home city. Five Nagis going to be able to clean this up. But the only issue is that these units here on the back line. And GG gets called. Orders calls GG. And that is the game. What a game. Action-packed game. Great to see these two players duking it out with some of the Asian civs. Definitely my two favorite Asian civs. I'm a big fan of, of China, a big fan of Japan. If you guys have enjoyed this game, I encourage you to leave a like down below. If you guys would like to see India, I'd like you to leave a comment letting me know just because I don't see a lot of people asking for India. So if you would like to see it, I encourage you to do that. Let's take a look at the timeline. We'll have a look at the resources gathered. Both players relatively even on the same sort of... Uh, 
the same sort of graph, uh, the scaling, I guess we would say, uh, 22K versus 19K or roughly 20K at the end. We'll take a look at, uh, at military unit population. We see both players even throughout most of the game orders pulling ahead quite early, but having his attack nullified, being able to outmass once again, Painted Egg is still somehow managing to keep up and then just slowly we see the numbers dwindle. And there we go. We'll take a look at uh, at village account as well just before we close this one out. A couple villages going down from orders as well as a couple villages going down from Painted Egg as well just before he got that wonder up. Fellas, I hope you've enjoyed this game. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you guys in the next one.